Why is the housing market a complete disaster? I'm gonna break it down for you in under five minutes. So from the years 1970 to 2020, for those 50 years, the median household income, the average American family could qualify for the average home in this country. If you look at 1970, 1975, 1982, pick any year, the median household income could qualify for the median house in the country. So that made sense for the middle class. But in 2020, what happened? Well, we had the pandemic. And what did they do during the pandemic? They decided to lower interest rates to two and a half to three percent to lower that financial burden so people could refinance, have that extra money to get through the pandemic. But what this did was essentially allow people to borrow free money. So investors and first time home buyers and second home buyers were utilizing these two and a half and three percent interest rates, which drove a ton of demand into the market. Because in 2020, the average price of a house in America was $250,000. Do you remember this just four short years ago? A beautiful $250,000 home, a great starter home in a neighborhood in most cities you could get. And this was at a 3% interest rate. So a $250,000 home at a 3% interest rate was putting your principal and interest, property taxes, homeowner insurance, and even potential PMI around $1,500 a month. So what did someone have to earn? What did the American family have to earn to qualify for this? About $50,000 a year if they carried very little debt. There's even some individuals who are making $50,000 a year, a lot of Americans, but especially the families. About 80% of American families were making $50,000 or more a year and had a shot at qualifying if they had all their ducks in a row, 80%. So that's why so much demand came into the market, which crushed the supply and drove the prices up, which brings us now to January 2024, where the homes are sitting around $420,000. Some of these homes that were 250 are actually now 400, but the average price is anywhere from 410 to 430, let's call it 420, at a 7% interest rate, is now putting that monthly payment out the door with property taxes and everything around 3,500. So what does the average American or American family have to earn to have a shot at qualifying? About $115,000 if they have very little debt. And how many American families make more than 100,000 or 115,000? About 35%. So in four short years, we went from about 80% of American families having a shot at qualifying for the average house to now only 35%, 45% of Americans now are now pinched. And here's the rotten cherry on top of the whole thing. If institutional investors and people understand these statistics and go, so wait a minute, if these 45% of Americans cannot buy a home anymore, they must rent. So what are the institutional investors doing? Doubling down, buying up single family homes and starter homes in first time buyer market. It's around the 300 to $600,000 range. They are buying up properties, which is keeping supply low, keeping the prices going up, especially if interest rates drop, I think prices are gonna go up even higher. They want people to live in a renter's economy. But this is exactly what has happened over the past four years. There's other factors, but this was the main reason. When you had low homes, when you had low prices, 250, reasonable, at a 3% interest rate, then they had to raise the interest rates over time to, to stop the, the, I mean, cause it was going ridiculous. Remember back in 2021, if you are aware of it, people were offering 30, 40, 50,000 over asking, waiving contingencies because there was such demand. Most houses that I was helping people show, I was showing people, they were getting nine, 10, 15, 30 offers in 48 hours of the home being listed. That's how little supply there was. And if you didn't get the house and you made an offer and there were 30 offers and only one person gets it, now a new home comes on the market the next day, all 29 people go to that one and submit an offer again. And it was just some people got buyer's fatigue and they just go, I can't do this. That is what created this entire market. And now here we sit today and you wonder why millennials and Gen Zers and first time home buyers are complaining. It's because it's not even really the down payment. That's a burden but it's the fact that you have to make over $100,000 in most cities with very little debt to even have a shot at qualifying for a home. So that's why we're having a disaster right now and that's why we need to focus on how do we get these interest rates down? How do we increase supply so that the millennials, Gen Z, and first time home buyers have a shot at buying a house? And if, they're, if they don't, and we're a renter's economy moving forward, then we need to discuss a new narrative of what is the American dream moving forward then for Americans like millennials and Gen Zers. If they're not gonna be able to buy a house, what is the new American dream and how do we define it?